What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to get automatic 1111's Stable Diffusion Web UI running on a Mac. Obviously, this isn't going to give you the highest performance on an M1 or M2 chip. You're going to get the best performance on a desktop PC with a powerful NVIDIA graphics card. If you're running a Hackintosh or something along those lines, this will probably work out great for you, though this is something built for Linux or Windows. So even though it can run, you are probably able to squeeze out much better performance using better hardware and a better setup. Anyways, without further ado, how do we get this setup and working on a Mac? Well, over here, I'm connected to an M1 MacBook Air, and I'll be showing you how you can set it up. First of all, we'll need Homebrew installed. If you don't already have it installed, open up a browser, head across to brew.sh, and copy this command here. When you've clicked the copy button, open up a new terminal, terminal, paste it in here, and hit enter. This will go ahead and install Homebrew after you confirm your password. There we go. So enter. And now we just simply need to wait for this to finish. If you've already installed Homebrew, you can run this command again to update it, which is exactly what I'm doing here. There we go. It's now done installing. The next step is installing the required programs for this to work. Brew, install, CMake, protobuf, rust, python at 3.10, git, and wget. I'll hit enter to install all of these bits of software. If you're prompted to hit enter to continue, just make sure to do so. There we go. The download's now complete. I can clear, and we'll run the next command, git clone space, followed by the automatic 11.11 stable diffusion web UI GitHub URL. You can either Google for automatic 11.11 and click the GitHub link, or copy the link in the description down below. I'll copy this one here, then I'll paste it in here. So git clone the git URL, hit enter, and it'll download the project onto our PC so we can run it in just a moment. If we type in open dot, we'll open the folder in a finder window, and inside of here, you'll find Stable Diffusion Web UI. Sweet, I'll open up this folder, sort by kind, and now we're back in a similar looking folder structure that we have on Windows. What we need to do here is open the models folder over here, then Stable Diffusion, and inside of here, we need to drop Stable Diffusion checkpoints or safe tensor files. These are models that will actually be used to generate images. For this, the easiest place to download them is probably Hugging Face if you want the original ones, but there are other websites that allow you to download modified and pre-tuned Stable Diffusion models. I won't go into that here though. I'll download Stable Diffusion 1.5 from Hugging Face. Obviously, you can get version 2. I think there's even 2.1 now. For me, 1.5 is what I'll be using. I'll head across to Files and Versions, then scroll down and locate the checkpoint, which you can see there are two of them here. I'll download 1.5 pruned. I'll click the small Download File button next to this here, and it'll start downloading the file. When this is done downloading, simply move it into this Stable Diffusion folder here. Obviously, this is where most of your space will be used up when you're using Stable Diffusion for image generation. It's mostly the models and things like that. When you do start up Stable Diffusion, there'll be a further two or so gigabytes downloaded and installed, which is PyTorch and other Python libraries for setting up the image generation software. 7.1, 7.2. There we go. I'll drag it into this Stable Diffusion Models folder. Awesome. What we'll do now is minimize our file browser and head back to our terminal that we still haven't closed. And I'll type in CD space ST, hit tab to automatically type out the rest of it. In this case, Stable Diffusion Web UI. I'll hit enter. And now we're inside of the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder we were just looking at. Inside of here, we have Web UI user.sh, where we can set up options and things like that for Stable Diffusion. And we have Web UI sh that we can use to start up the automatic 1111 stable diffusion web ui so in order to just run it straight out the bat and install things as necessary run dot slash web hit tab to type in web ui sh or simply type it out yourself tab just automatically tries to guess what you're typing out and fills out the rest of it if you get the wrong file just keep hitting tab and it should cycle through them or just give you an option in this case. Anyways, hitting enter for dot slash web UI dot sh, it'll start up the Python installer and things like that to install all of the necessary packages. It's downloading 50 megs here, two gigs there, back and forth. Well, never mind, it seems like it didn't need to download two gigs of PyTorch. It's actually a lot smaller, that's pretty good. We'll have to see how the performance is though. I don't expect anything groundbreaking, but we'll see. 
After it's prepared the necessary packages, it'll go ahead and install PF, it'll go ahead and install GFPGAN, CodeFormer and things like that, which are all different packages and projects used in this greater project, Stable Diffusion. This could take a few minutes to a handful of minutes, depending on the speed of your internet. Once it's installed, it'll eventually start up. You'll see an HTTP link here. Simply right click, copy this and head across there in a browser. When you navigate there, you'll see this familiar web UI. Obviously you can customize things as you please. I'll just type say pool maybe and generate. The first time you generate, this will probably take a lot longer than the other times. And if we have a look at the console over here, you'll see exactly what it's doing as it's working. Obviously it'll be quite slow, but you can still use it. And it's great to see that it is working. There's a few optimizations to make it a bit better, which I'll get to in just a moment. And there we go, after 20 iterations and a few seconds, there is a 512 by 512 image of a pool. It's a heck of a lot slower than using a dedicated graphics card, but it works and it's amazing. There's only a few caveats to running this on Mac. For some people, training won't work. The clip interrogator may not work for other people. Now, of course, this is a cheaper MacBook Air M1, but assuming you're running into issues with VRAM, trying to make bigger pictures or generate with a higher batch size than one, there are a few optimizations that we can try to get this to run a bit faster. If I pull across the console here, it reached 2.7 iterations per second, and it took 50 seconds or so to generate an image, but we can try and improve it. I'll hit Control C to cancel out of this. And inside of this folder, we have a web UI user.sh file. I'll navigate back to here, either with open space dot to open it in Finder or reopening the Finder window we had open previously. And I'll scroll down to web UI hyphen user.sh. I'll right click, open with, and choose a text editor. Inside of here, you'll look for the line command line args, and you'll remove the hash at the start of it, allowing us to type in here. Some commands that may help performance are hyphen hyphen med VRAM as such, which should load the model and things like that in parts into RAM, giving you better RAM usage while you're using it and better performance, hopefully. Another suggested option is opt split attention. I'll be copying this with command C and pasting with command V as that's also a pretty good option to have. If you're still experiencing issues, you can run it with low VRAM as well instead of just med VRAM. If you find that you're getting issues launching it at all, some of the command line options that you can try and add are hyphen hyphen skip hyphen torch CUDA test as such and no half as well as use CPU space all to try and use CPU only. This could help save you if you're having issues on your Mac. Use command S to save. We can leave this open or whatever, and we'll be opening a terminal in this folder here. So in future to start it up, just open a terminal, use CD space and type in ST for stable diffusion, hit tab to type out the whole thing, enter to navigate into here, and then dot slash web UI.sh. It should then start up and work properly as per before. Of course, some of these options will nerf your performance even further, but if you have to do some of them, then you have to use some of them. There we go, now it's loaded. I can reopen it in Firefox, tell it to generate a new image, and just like that, it'll start iterating through once more. So your performance will really vary on the kind of hardware that you have, whether it's an M1 or M2, an Air, a Pro, a Max, or whatever. The better hardware you have, the more money you spend on it, but the better performance you should get in Stable Diffusion Web UI. Now, obviously, I wouldn't recommend running this on a Mac and getting a Mac just to run Stable Diffusion Web UI. As with a proper NVIDIA graphics card on a desktop, you can get much, much better performance. But for now, it is what it is. And with that comes the end of this super quick video. Of course, you can play around with commands that go in here to further customize your install and hopefully getting it to work a bit better. But that really just comes down to your system and playing around with it. That's the basic install for Automatic 11.11's Stable Diffusion Web UI. You now know how to download it, open it, generate images, and open it in the future after installing it. So hopefully you found this video really useful. Thank you all for watching. I've been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!